رمضان تجلى وابتسم طوبى للعبد إذا تنما At what age does it become obligatory to fast? Now, to rephrase the question so that it would become a bit more informative. Who are those that fasting is obligatory upon them? Or in another word, what are the conditions that must be fulfilled so fasting would become mandatory? There are five conditions. One is Islam. Two is to be accountable. Three is to be able. Four is to be a resident. Five is to not have any obstacles. And I'll explain this to you in a very easy fashion, inshallah. First, you have to be a Muslim, which means if a non-Muslim comes to you and says, your religion is beautiful. Can I fast with you Ramadan? Sure thing, fast. So he fasts exactly like I do. From the break of dawn till the sunset. And he eats fatur, he eats some busak with me and, and some shorba, maybe some biryani. This is not accepted from him because he's a kafir, he's a disbeliever. So condition number one, you have to be Muslim in order for you that your fasting is accepted and it's obligated. Number two, to be accountable. In Arabic, we call it a taklif. And taklif means that you have to be sane and adult. What do you mean by sane? Which means that anyone who's insane, someone who does not have control over his actions or thoughts, Someone who's lost his sanity is not obliged to fast. Someone who's 40 years of age, but he takes his poo and washes his face with it. He doesn't know when it's morning or when it's evening. He doesn't know his father from his uh, uh, brother. He doesn't know anything. He's a, he has the intellect of a three or two years uh, uh, of age child. Insane. He's not obliged to fast. And if he does, it's not counted for him. And likewise, a child who does, did not reach the age of puberty and the evidence, where, where do you bring this from, Sheikh? Well, it's crystal clear. The Prophet said, والسلام, the pen, which means the accountability pen that registers your good deeds and bad deeds, the pen is uplifted from three. Someone who's asleep until he wakes up. Someone who's insane until he regains his sanity and the child until he reaches the age of puberty. So this answers your question, though it does not finish my argument. At what age does it become obligatory to fast? When the child becomes an adult, he's obliged to fast. It's mandatory upon him to fast. Oh, Sheikh, does this mean that a child does not fast? Because a boy may reach the age of puberty when he is like 13 or 14 years of age. So we, he doesn't fast? He said, no, no, no. He's obliged to fast when he reaches the age of puberty. It doesn't mean that we do not teach him how to fast and train him how to fast earlier on. Can you explain? Yeah, sure. The Prophet says, order your children to pray when they are seven and beat them when they are 10. They have not reached the age of puberty. They're not accountable, yes, but this is part of the training. From, three, from seven to 10, three years, I do not lay a hand on the child. Come son, let's pray. Come pray, I'll give you chocolate. Come uh, uh, with me to the masjid. Oh, people are asking about you. Encouragement. A little bit of intimidation, but no punishment at all. For three years, 360 days multiplied by five times, you do the math. I flunked Calculus 101. So this doesn't mean he's accountable, but this is a training. 
Likewise, the children. The companions used to, uh, to ask and have their children fast until it's midday. When they're starving and thirsty, they would give them probably dolls of wool to play with. When it's Asr time and they're totally wasted, so they allow them to eat, maybe a drink. Next year, the period would be longer. Third year, they're okay. Is it obligatory to the, to, for them to fast? No, it's not. You should train them. But what is the appropriate age to train them? It differs. Because such a training depends entirely on their endurance and their tolerance. I have one of my grandchildren who's eight years of age. When she started to fast, she was eight. And she fasted the whole of Ramadan. MashaAllah, no problem. Not a single day missed. Not feeling fatigue, not crying and, and, and whining. And I have another grandson who's like 11 years of age and he often breaks his fasting. He's, he can't tolerate it. So it, de it depends on the tolerance of the person. All what we do is encourage them, give them uh, good words of praising, etc., until it gets into the system, and then, inshallah, it will be normal. Going back to my argument, I have not finished. So, Muslim, accountable, and then he has to be able for fasting to be mandatory. What do you mean able, Sheikh? If he's too old, he's 90 years of age, he doesn't have any illnesses, but being this old, he's so fragile and weak. So by 12 noon, he's almost dead, no power. So he's not able, he's exempted. Or chronically ill, someone who has an illness that mandates that he breaks his fast. Doctors say he would never ever be able to fast or make up his missed days. Those are not obliged to fast. Number four, he has to be a resident. So a person who's traveling, is exempted from fasting. And number five, obstacles must be removed. There should not be obstacles. What do we mean obstacles? Women who are menstruating or having postnatal bleeding. This, out of their choice, prevents them from fasting. So these are the five conditions. Memorize them. It would give you a lot of knowledge and um, momentum to understand when to fast and when not to fast. <laughs>